everyone, it's John from What Up, and welcome back to another video. This is going to be my episode 3 review for The Wheel of Time, streaming currently on Prime Video. Now, I've done reviews for the first two episodes, including breakdowns, Easter egg videos, readers, non-reader questions, parents' guides, you name it, I'm doing it for all of the episodes. So if you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button and the notification bell. I'm putting out at least two Wheel of Time videos per day, every day, and it's going to be that way for quite some time. So if you like Wheel of Time stuff, make sure you sub to the channel. Now, um, this review, we're going to talk a little bit about it here. We are doing the same thing as the last two reviews. The first part will be spoiler free. So I'm going to talk about what I liked about the actual episode, what I didn't like about it. Then I'll give a spoiler warning. And after the spoiler warning, I'll go full spoilers and give specific examples as to why. Now, one other disclaimer before we start, I'm not including any of the changes from book to show at all. I'm not even considering them in my reviews because I'm reviewing the show on its own merits. In my mind, this is another turning of the wheel. I've had a couple of years to make peace with all the changes that they've made because I've known about a lot of them for a very long time because I follow all the leaks and do news here in the channel. Um, and I'm not going to include that. If you'd like to know the changes between the books and the show, watch my breakdown videos. I highlight all the scenes, I talk about them, and I talk about all of the changes there. That's what those videos are for. This one, just reviewing the show on its own merits. All right, episode three, nine out of ten. This is by far the best of the three episodes so far. Um, if Amazon keeps going this way, I'll have to go above 10 stars. No, I'm, I'm just joking. Um, but so far, the first episode was a little shaky. I had problems with it. I talked about that in my review, and it went over like a lead balloon with a lot of you. A lot of people are very upset with me because I'm normally a very positive person. The second episode, way better, much better. This one, even better in my opinion. 100% giving this a 9 out of 10. I really thoroughly enjoyed this one. Um, for a lot of people who didn't enjoy the first episode, keep at it. By the time you get to the third, you're going to be hooked on the show. Bar none, it's going to happen. All right, so we're going to talk first about the cinematography. So the shots, the setups, the scenes, and the sets. Uh, the way things looked on screen. Again, I'm going to stand by this. It's beautiful. I've said in my other two review videos that I like the way these things look, and they're prettier than Lord of the Rings, The Witcher, and Game of Thrones. I stand by that. I got really roasted pretty hard in the last video by a few uh, Lord of the Rings fans who said that, how could this look better than Lord of the Rings? It doesn't even come close. In my opinion, I think it's way better. Lord of the Rings was picturesque and pretty, yes. The sets were very epic. They were very cool looking. But The Wheel of Time does all of that in a more grounded way. I thought it was really fantastic. Now, in this particular episode, the scenery, very, very pretty, very cool. A lot of the shots were very nice. Um, even the shots that weren't meant to be pretty, they were gritty, they were real, and they happened to progress the story properly. So I really enjoyed that. Costumes, again, costumes, I can't say enough good things about them. They're all absolutely fantastic. Right down to the herb pouches, the belt knives, uh, the little leather straps. All of it looks very, very nice, very cool. They did a very good job with all the costumes. Some people have complaints about them because they don't think they're gritty enough. I think they all look very, very nice. Next thing we're going to talk about here is the acting. Wow. <laughs> so I've had nothing but good things to say about most of the acting so far in the show. And I've said that for the last couple of years. There's been a lot of concerns about some of these actors and actresses that are uh, joining the Wheel of Time because they're new. They don't have a whole lot of experience. But KVH Casting and Amazon did an excellent job casting these people. They are their characters. Now, the real stars of this show were Bernie Harris, of course. He's stealing the show. Barney Harris is absolutely amazing. I'm really sad he's not coming back for uh, season two. And that's something my wife has said a number of times. She's his favorite character. Um, and she's sad he's not coming back. Uh, he stole the show. He embodies Matt in every way, shape, and form. Um, then you have Zoe Robbins. Zoe Robbins, she's the perfect naive in my opinion. Her acting was top-notch, bar none. And the other person that really stole the show, show in this particular episode was Azuka Doyle. She is awesome. I don't know what else to say about her. She's a really, really good actress. She stole every scene she was in. I thought she really played her part well. Um, and the last person I want to talk about, of course, Alexander William. Um, I've said it on Twitter and I've said it a few other places. Show Tom, way better than book Tom, in my opinion. Alexander William plays an excellent Tom. Not exactly the same Tom you see in the books, but the character is phenomenal. I really like him and he does an excellent job portraying him. All right, next thing we're going to talk about is special effects and VFX. I liked it in this episode, uh, mainly because there wasn't a whole lot of stuff where I could notice things go wrong. Now, I've been roasted a little bit in the comments again in my last couple of videos. And, you know, people like to complain about certain things about me. And one of the things is I'm a practical effects person. I enjoy it. And somebody mentioned, oh, you like those rubbery suits. You're one of those people. 
Well, no, not really. I mean, yes, I'm a child of the 80s. I grew up watching Alien, um, uh, Hellraiser, uh, all of those old movies where they did a lot of practical effects and they were beautiful on screen and they still hold up in my opinion today. I like stuff that looks real. Um, I have no problem with CG, but if the CG looks a little bit different or a little bit wonky, I don't enjoy it. Now, this particular episode I watched on multiple devices, such as I've been uh, advised to by certain people in the comments. I watched it uh, on my tablet, my phone. I watched it on uh, my, my OLED TV. I watched it on projector. I watched it on a bunch of different things. I've noticed small changes in the, in the special effects and VFX each time, but mostly, for me, they're pretty much the same. If I spot a glaring error, it bothers me. This episode didn't have many at all, so they did a really good job here. All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about after that is going to be the pacing. The pacing of this episode I thought was absolutely fantastic. They did a very good job. They cut between slow pacing, they were able to explain certain parts of the story, there were a lot of really nice moments between the characters, there were a lot of action sequences and scenes, but the heart and soul of Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time isn't the big, huge action sequences. It's the characters themselves and how they interact with each other. This episode did that absolutely phenomenally. So the pacing of this episode I thought was spot on. Nothing felt rushed. Nothing felt too compressed. Uh, nothing felt too drawn out. I thought they did a really good job there. Again, 9 out of 10. By far the best of the three episodes in my opinion. All right, now we're going to get into the spoiler section. So for those of you who haven't seen the episode yet or don't want any spoilers for the show, you can dip out now. Spoiler warning, we're now going to talk about certain elements about episode three in relation to things I've said in the first half of the video. So if you haven't seen episode three, I'm going to ruin it for you, just so you know. All right, um, we're going to start, start, start off with the sets, the scenes, the cuts, the cut scenes, the shots, uh, costumes, things like that. Um, I said some of these shots weren't pretty, so... First off, when Matt and Rand were on the mountain with all those beautiful stones, I don't know who scouted the locations, but what, give them a raise. That was absolutely gorgeous. Um, I really enjoyed that. Again, their costumes, we've seen the costumes on them. They are getting more ratty and more worn as they're on the road a little bit longer. They're getting dirtier. You can see here dirt and dust on, on Perrin's costume and Egwene. Uh, a lot of people have mentioned in the promotional material, they look too bright, too clean, too uh, pressed for them being on the road and in a fantasy series. Those were obviously shots meant for commercial uh, purposes. The show itself, they're doing a really good job here. Um, even the scenes, and I mentioned this, that weren't pretty. So when you have uh, Perrin and Egwene running through the woods, running through that those giant open fields, uh, they're a nod to certain scenes in the first book that aren't included in the show, but they're a nod to them. Um, they're not pretty. The, the grass is brown. There's stunted trees everywhere. It's not a pretty location, but the shot is set up so well, and it gives you empathy for the characters, and it makes makes you feel that they're cold, that they're 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 scared, they're they're on the run. I love the way those were set up. Really great job. The last thing I want to talk about is the inn. I mean, I could talk about all these scenes for a long time, but the inn, the inn in Breen Spring, the Four Kings Inn with the four king pillars outside. Uh, absolutely immaculate absolutely beautiful we've seen these in the promos for tom before when they, they showcase tom's guitar we've seen these in some of the teasers and 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 uh, images they released but this in much like the wine spring down to the smallest detail the sets are immaculate in my opinion all right next thing we're going to talk about is the acting uh the acting again wow i don't know what else to say about the acting really really fantastic um i mentioned in the first half of the video that a few people in my mind, stole the show. Barney Harris, of course, as Matt, he embodies Matt. He is fantastic. Um, he's making a couple quips and cracks to uh, Rand as they're walking along. Um, I love them. The one-liners are absolutely fantastic. And I think, yes, they're playing it from comedic relief, but that's kind of what he was in the book series in, in a small way as well. And wow, he is a really good, he does a really good job. And then later on, he does a good job throughout the episode of showcasing the taint of that dagger. He gets more and more surly, uh, despondent, wants to be alone a little bit, doesn't like Rand, wants to leave, all of those things. Um, he's doing a good job of subtly showing what the dagger is doing to him. And for, for those who've read the book series and know what I'm talking about, um, I think he's doing a friggin' excellent job of that. Uh, next person that stole the show, Azuka uh, Doyle. Wow. Wow. She is... I don't know what to say about her. She's a phenomenal actress. She plays Dana, the dark friend, and pfft, wow. So she's the barmaid in the uh, in, in the Four Kings Inn, um, and I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie to you. I didn't see it coming. I knew from reading the book series that yes, 
This is probably going to be an amalgam for Four Kings. It's probably going to be an amalgam of a lot of the other villages. We're probably going to see uh, a dark friend at some point. But right up until she revealed herself, I really... I knew it was happening, but I didn't know if that makes any sense. She was that good at playing the good and the bad of that character. She stole every scene she was in. She shined over Barney Hare. She shined over Yosha Sardowski. She was fantastic. I'm really sad that she doesn't make it out of the end of the episode because I would have liked to have her come back later on because she was such a good character. Um, last person I want to talk about here, uh, of course, Zoe Robbins was fantastic. All the scenes she was in with Lan. Uh, so when Daniel Henney and her are on the screen, she outshines him bar none she's absolutely fantastic she's a good actress of course daniel henny's playing the stoic land so he does that well but zoe zoe is naive wow uh so we're gonna talk about tom alexander william is tom a lot of people were very concerned about him when he was cast as tom they didn't think he had the look a lot of people had a very specific look and motif in their mind for tom and then when i watched the episode for the first time i was like this isn't tom None of the mannerisms are the same. The the, the way he acts isn't the same. The, the singing isn't the same. Uh, he stole from Matt. All these other things. And I, I immediately didn't like it at first. And then as he's on the screen longer and longer, it kind of grew on me. And I watched it the second time. And I realized, wow, I like this Tom better than Book Tom. Book Tom, especially in the first book, he's only there for a little bit. But he's not really as immersed in the character or, or, or the lore of the other things that, that are going on, as this Tom is. This Tom is fantastic. The song he sang, the gritty voice, um, this is this is sexy Tom. And, yeah, a lot of people at this point I've read can see why Elaine saw something in him. Um, but, yeah, this Tom is fantastic. Alexander William stole the show. So when he was on screen, when he was with Barney Harris, when he was with Yosha, when he was singing his song, and later on with the Aiel when they were burying him, this, this, this guy can act. He's really, really good. All right, uh, VFX special effects. Again, I'm not really going to say too much on this. There weren't a whole lot of huge scenes in this particular episode where they showcased it uh, that I could tell, which I liked. They were there. I knew they were there, but I couldn't tell. So they did a really good job of, of, of sort of squirreling it away, hiding in this one. Um, maybe a couple of spots with the wolves. I was like, eh, you could tell that's, that's, that's CG, but not too bad at all. Uh, they did a really good job with this, and I was really impressed. Now, the very last thing we're talking about is pacing. Um, we all know there's changes from the book to the story, and again, they're not part of the review, so I'm trying to think of the pacing as for the show. With this, we had enough time with Perrin and um, Egwene for them to talk, for them to, you know, showcase their talents, uh, their their acting chops, and as well as, as, as their characters, how well they're meshed together. We had a lot of time with Matt and Rand together, um, and the way they riffed off each other was absolutely fantastic. But the pacing itself, so we had enough time with each group of characters to get a feel for the characters and a feel for the scenes. And then it moved on to a different scene. Um, it wasn't too rushed. It wasn't too compressed. I feel like they spent just the perfect amount of time with every single character. And there was the perfect amount of action interspaced with um, exposition and other things they did there because, man, they really progressed the story in this one episode way more than they did in even the first episode. Um, and it didn't feel rushed like the first episode was. So those are my thoughts. Uh, let me know what you folks think in the comments down below. Uh, some of my opinions may not be popular, but I will be always honest with you about what I like and don't like about the show. Uh, I have no problem stating things I don't like. Some people in the fandom either feel like you have to like everything or dislike everything. I'm not like that at all. I am excited for the show. I can love the show while disliking certain aspects of it. Just so you folks are aware, I will never give up my love of the show, but I can dislike some things. All right. Thank you so much for sticking with me here to the very end. Here's to many more.